The NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 are both popular large cap heavy indices, and you will find some similar names in their top holdings. But at the same time, they're pretty different from each other in terms of the number of companies they track, their weight, as well as sector allocation. This has resulted in a difference in performance of the two indices over various periods. Therefore, if you're looking to invest in any of these funds tracking these indices, it'll be helpful to understand the construct of these indices. First, what is the S&P 500 index? Launched in 1957, the S&P 500 is one of the oldest indices in the US. The index is made up of the 500 largest listed US companies. These companies combined represent more than 80% of the total market cap listed on the US stock exchange. Therefore, the S&P 500 index can be considered a broad indicator of the US equity markets. The weightage of companies that are part of the index is based on their market cap. The higher the market cap, the higher the weightage of the stock in the index. It's also ensured that sector balance is in line with the overall market cap of the listed companies on the exchange so that no sector has a disproportionately high weight in the index. Although the top holdings include tech giants such as Apple and Microsoft, the allocation to the sector combined is less than 30%. Companies from the top three sectors together account for around 53% of the index portfolio, which is far lower than compared to the NASDAQ 100. With around 500 stocks, the index represents over 11 sectors. A large number of the 500 stocks in the index ensures that the portfolio is not tilted heavily towards any particular sector or stock. The top three sectors are technology, which accounts for 27.6%, healthcare, which accounts for 13.3%, and consumer discretionary, which accounts for 12.4%. So then what is the NASDAQ 100 index? Launched in 1985, the NASDAQ 100 index represents the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. The US is home to some of the largest financial and technology companies. The exclusion of the financial giants results in the NASDAQ 100 being dominated by global tech majors including Apple, Google, Microsoft, Tesla, etc. These companies are the world leaders in the technology and innovation sectors. Tech companies combined account for over half of the holdings of the index. The NASDAQ 100 index is generally recognized as a tech index, but it also includes Pepsi and Starbucks. However, the allocation is not very high. The top three sectors include technology, which accounts for 57.8%, consumer services, which accounts for 19.15%, and consumer goods, which accounts for 9.08%. So which index has performed better? The NASDAQ 100 has significantly outperformed the S&P 500 in terms of performance. Over the past 15 years, the NASDAQ 100 has delivered a compounded annual growth rate of around 16%, while the S&P 500 has returned about 8%. The average 10-year return of the NASDAQ 100 over these 15 years was around 9%, while that of the S&P 500 was about 5%. The returns of the NASDAQ 100 are nothing short of impressive, but the fact that most of these returns were derived from a few stocks may not be appreciated by many investors, especially those who want better downside protection. As the portfolio of the NASDAQ 100 is concentrated in technology stocks, including the FANG stocks, the performance of the index is mainly driven by these stocks. If the technology sector goes through turmoil, which it is now, the NASDAQ 100 is likely to hit harder, as seen in the past. During the dot-com bubble burst in 2002, the NASDAQ 100 corrected around 38%, while the fall in the S&P 500 was limited to 23%. Therefore, the volatility in the return of the NASDAQ 100 is likely to be higher when compared to the S&P 500. Even in the 2008 correction, the fall in the NASDAQ 100 index was 42%, while the S&P 500 was limited to 38%. The numbers clearly show that the NASDAQ 100 has significantly outperformed the S&P 500 index in terms of returns over the long term despite witnessing higher corrections. However, a tilt towards technology stocks makes the NASDAQ 100 look more like a thematic index. As the FANG stocks, which accounts for a majority of the portfolio of the NASDAQ 100, have already rallied quite a bit, they may find it difficult to sustain such a run going forward. And if there's a correction in the market, which is happening right now, they are likely to get hit harder as seen in the past. Therefore, the downside risk is likely to be higher in case of the NASDAQ 100 when compared to the S&P 500 index, which has a more broader representation of the US companies across different sectors. So if you're looking to own a more diversified basket of stocks, the S&P 500 will be the right fit for you. However, those who are comfortable with slightly higher risk for the extra return should probably invest in the NASDAQ 100. So then what are your thoughts? Are you invested in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, or something else? Comment below. And as always, take care of your money.